is to call him a distinguished alumni of IIT Madras. Swamiji, we cordially welcome you. Of Sri Sri Params Yoga and I think at best of all of success and complete uh, fulfillment. So, with this, I request uh, Swamiji to take over and uh, deliver this. Uh, uh, good, evening. good evening to everyone. I am very happy to come back after five decades. <laughs> I went out of this campus in 1975 <laughs> and I came once briefly in 2018 and I am very happy to come again <laughs> and I will be happier to come again and again <laughs> if our interactions are helpful to everybody. It is my wish that whatever I have gained through my experience, I would like to share with my young friends and to you all. And all. Today's talk will be more like serving soup before the dinner. <laughs> that means after that your appetite is, you know, it to increase your appetite. After that you will have to arrange for your dinner <laughs> and you will have to eat your dinner. Because in this short time, we can only cover the important points and to stimulate your thinking, to think in the right way. You know, what is our current problem? That's why today we chose the topic that inner energy, control of inner energy or inner control. Because outside last few uh, decades or centuries, we have made rapid progress because I remember in 1974-75 when we just started the new computer center at that time. I used to write my program in the Fortran. <laughs> I used to prepare cards, feed them in the computer, come on the next day and then take out the printout and then see where the errors are and debug and then again correct and then feed again. <laughs> so I can't imagine the progress which has been made over this last five decades now. Now even your simple watch has got everything, <laughs> you know, you don't have to do all those, uh, that type of thing. Similarly, when I was in Baba Atomic Research Center five years, those days, again, I was uh, trying to, I was involved in a project for measuring the temperature of the plasma, which is above 2300 like that. To measure that temperature, you know, that we have to find method of the plasma diagnostics. So. I was involved in that and those days very difficult to find the computer systems. So we have to import that uh, single board computers, SBCs and uh, with a special permission and we have to import and then I was uh, writing my program in machine language, assembly language and we used to test. Luckily the program worked well. <laughs> we went to Moscow and then we tested our unit and then it was very successful. So once I finished it, it dawned on me that I was not firing from all cylinders. <laughs> that means I was just concentrating on this uh, thermal power generation through plasma magnetohydrodynamics process by which how we can enhance the efficiency of thermal power plants. So I saw that the focus is, was more on electrical power generation. I thought that now is the time for me to move on and get get into spiritual power generation <laughs> because spiritual power it balances all dimensions of our lives that's what i'm going to talk about today how we all can have that type of balance perfect balance between inner life and outer life this is what this mismatch is the main problem main cause of all our uh, difficulties that is what, if you ask the question, what is the basic cause? Why so much of pressure, tension, burnout, all that? What is the reason? You will find a simple cause is that 
we direct all our attention and energies only on the outside that is the reason main reason you know that we have to understand in a very simple way you know sometimes the profound things can be very simple because of that we may miss the point for example albert einstein what did he say he said i don't want to know this phenomena or that phenomena i want to know how god thought of creation just pay attention to that how god thought of creation <laughs> great scientist albert einstein is saying that which means the whole substantial basis of creation just only thoughts <laughs> which when we hear from our rishis or you know those who have done research before uh, our uh, great yogis then we may take it lightly we may not really pay attention but when the great scientist tells us then you see really thoughts from thoughts only the whole creation has come <laughs> so the thoughts become condensed they become energy they become condensed they become all solid liquid vapor and all that various particles and then with the different combinations then we have all sorts of you know human um, animals plants in you know, inert matter and uh, human beings and human beings with self consciousness and all that whatever and various evolution process everything comes but then you see to the growth uh, root level you see what is happening you see that's what you know we may miss the point that's why this may appear like very simplistic you know that uh, think to i mean a uh, idea because you are directing all our attention on the outside that is the reason for our attention and all that but i would like you to think about it and without awareness and expression of the spiritual side of our being how can we be really find how can we really find fulfillment in life this is a question i will explain that further as we go along now in contrast to the outer technologies which we have developed over long time now our rishis long before had done research and discovered this inner technology how to control the life energy prana and the consciousness chetana chaitanya and chetana chaitanya and shakti i will just something interesting i will tell you i had come across this book a few years before is called gangho this written one of the authors is the author of one minute manager ken blanchard he said i mean in this interesting story is a very small book this uh, america there was this uh, chain multi chain company and one of the branches was not doing well it was in doldrums and they were going wanting to shut it down so from the head office they sent one manager like a promotion <laughs> it is a punishment promotion as it is <laughs> that mean they thought this lady will go there and uh, the who, along with the company she will also go <laughs> with that aim you know they sent her to that place but then there was an american indian manager handling the quality control department and his department all the other departments were doing very badly this department people were all working with a lot of joy and enthusiasm contributing etc so she got i mean uh, get to interact with him got to interact with him and found out what his father taught him three basic principles you will be very surprised to see this is observing the nature spirit of the squirrel if you study the squirrel it goes on accumulating the food so during the winter time when no food is available it already has so it is doing that work it appears it goes on you know collecting food but it is with a purpose so worthwhile work that is the you know we learned from a squirrel spirit of the squirrel way of the beaver beavers we may not know in india much they belong to the rodent family you find it below culverts and they work so fast and it look like as if there is chaos they are all everybody is moving around everywhere <laughs> but then just in overnight they can build a bridge like that it's a wonderful teamwork so this is illustrating the teamwork in control of achieving the goal what you want to achieve you know that this what is taught by the studying the beaver way of the beaver third gift of the goose cheering each other on you know the geese when they form that v formation and scientists had found out that because of that 71% more efficiency they have 
if individually whatever they could achieve with all of them flying together they are able to achieve much more so and also one goose takes the lead then other one comes back and they all take turns and they keep cheering each other so this gift of the goose is cheering each other now you see these three simple principles you'll be surprised so this lady taught to all the managers of various departments encouraged them and the company turned around it won president's medal <laughs> the company which was in doldrums going to be shut down and that turned around it became that just by observing this three simple principles that's why we should not neglect anything even simple things we observe we can learn from anybody you know and uh, if you find something interesting even the person is may not be socially or you know in a, a social scale he may not be in high level he may be a very simple person but even from that person you will be able to learn this is what iit iim ahmedabad students once they went to some bazaar and found this uh, hawkers etc and from them the students learned good lessons <laughs> so anyway this is just interesting sideline i'm giving now i'm coming to the point about all round success we all talk about success in 21st century in order to be successful even outwardly what is required i will give you some interesting reference to you it is listed by in the book by gay hendricks and kate kate ludman the corporate mystic you see the points number 1 what is required for a 21st century leader to be successful you will be very surprised don't fall out of the seat <laughs> one absolute honesty <laughs> second fairness third self knowledge fourth a focus on contribution fifth non dogmatic spirituality sixth they get more done by doing less you know like this author he observed one great leader and he saw just in half a day what he would do in seven days with so much of running around and doing all that as if he is not doing anything just relaxing and just in half a day he achieved all that that's what they get more done by doing less then they call forth the best of themselves and others you bring out the best from your ourselves and bring out the best from others openness to change then a special sense of humor not putting down anyone a keen distant vision and up close focus that means they have the goal in mind at the same time what we need to do right now focus on that then unusual self discipline twelfth a balanced life so you are surprised isn't it you see these are the qualities listed by leadership trainers of today they are giving this quality these are not coming from our ancient mystics or you know spiritual people these are coming from the management people why i am giving you to give you the parallel now as as per management experts how they define success even this is also very interesting many of you may have heard of stephen covey his book seven habits of highly effective people where he talks about the various generations of management first generation management simple to do you just list down what all to be done you achieve you are successful second generation you prioritize them which one to be done first third generation management value based management that is if something has got value you achieve that then you are successful now comes the point fourth generation management what they say or what is the fourth generation management is one who is principle centered he is a real successful person that means there are definite principles operating in the cosmos there are cosmic laws by which the whole creation is functioning to align with those cosmic laws then you are a successful person <laughs> very interesting isn't it this is the fourth generation management given by the management expert so if you do that then you find fulfillment in life and you are very very you are happier and you prosper in whatever you are doing so real success is linked to principle centered living now i come to success as defined by paramsa yoganand now you can appreciate that co correlation it is what you have attained within that determines success if you are happy within you have all success that mean even if you have name fame and uh, power position all of that if you are not peaceful inside 
you are not happy inside you are not real successful person think about that because all of you were budding you know uh, technologists scientists research scholars all of you should have a very clear idea of what is the purpose of life why we are here and what how we can have real success that's why i thought this topic will be very interesting it will stimulate your thinking you think start thinking for yourself what is real all round success i will give you one interesting incident which happened some few years before in germany in berlin one of our monks from self realization fellowship he had addressing group of young adults in germany berlin and he asked them what do you want me to talk about they all said swami ji please talk about success then he threw the ball in their court he said okay you you all come up with what is real success so he started writing down on the white board that all the points they listed finally i condensed them all and just three points emerged maximum many of them had said the same thing you will be surprised to hear again he said one to find happiness within me that was real success first one second one to realize the human potential each one of us we have got our uniqueness we have got our speciality we have got our talent to bring out that human potential complete bring out the human potential that is the second point third one to balance the inner life and the outer life you see the current young adults of germany what they thought about this is not coming from the swami ji it's coming from the audience and they all said these are the, this is what this is what the real success is so that's so you see if you think a little bit deeply you will also see real success is not just only outer outwardly what we achieve it is what you have attained within that's what param shivagan ji is telling us so success is to be measured by the yardstick of happiness by your ability to remain in peaceful harmony with cosmic laws we all have conscience if our conscience is clear all the time then we are successful very simple isn't it if our conscience is strict we are not really at peace within ourselves no matter the whole world praises us and no word you will get whole in you know, acclaim is there name is there we are not really successful if you are not really happy inside so normally we measure by the worldly standards of all that wealth prestige power etc but that's one sided success it's not real all round success it is not so then how success. to get this all round success so very simple thing living a balanced life leads to all round success that is living in harmony with the cosmic principles because the one cosmic consciousness we want to call it that way because some people may call it god some people may by call by different name it doesn't matter whatever name you call is the infinite bliss consciousness or the cosmic consciousness that has created the whole creation that is the fundamental principle of the whole creation inner life outer life everything so if you are in harmony with those principles by which the cosmos is governed then you are having real success to do that we have to understand who we are who are we if we ask the question are we real really only the physical beings are we only only intellectual mental beings are we emotional beings are we spiritual being if we ask the question you will see we are all of this there are several different faculties we are operating from operating in different dimensions when we operate through the physical body then we are physical beings when we operate with our intellect with the thought level then we are intellectual beings when we thought when we deal with emotions then we become emotional beings and spiritual being when we are in contact with the infinite consciousness then we are spiritual beings you see so that means since one god has created the whole thing it makes lot of sense that we need to develop all the faculties that is the reason why he had given so many faculties otherwise suppose the body need not be kept fit we simply have to just do some spiritual exercise or meditation and just find result but it is not like that we have to develop the body and keep it fit and we have to develop the powers of the mind that's why you know basically in an institute like this what is the focus it is to develop your particular skill in a particular area whatever it is developing your intellectual capacity 
ability, skill, all that. This is the second side. But other two dimensions should not be neglected. And we focus so much on intellect, intellectual development that we neglect the physical side, we neglect the emotional side, we neglect the spiritual side, then we are in trouble. That's why we can learn in the raw, wrong, I mean hard way or we can learn by thinking about it and learn in a faster way. It's up to us. Suppose we want to learn in a hard way, then it's fine. Don't listen to all these things. Just do everybody is doing, whatever everybody is doing. Just to go ahead. Later on, <laughs> you will realize, like Stephen Covey gives the example, you put a ladder on a wall. Very fast you climb before others. There are so many ladders are there. Everybody is climbing. The one who climbs very fast, he goes to the top. And when he goes to the top, he realizes the ladder was on the wrong wall. <laughs> then all his efforts of going to the top, it's all wasted, isn't it? So this is what happens when we do things without thinking, just copy whatever everybody else is doing, what the society is telling you, what others are telling you, if you just follow like that, then this will be the result. There's a hard way to learn. <laughs> but better way to learn is a wise man. How a wise man learns? He studies others and sees. A person who is very successful, a great billionaire or millionaire, he has got name, fame, is he really happy? If you study that. You know, I will tell you a story. Because through story, it's easier to remember. One of our monastics, Swami Anandamai, he is from Switzerland. And he, through Second World War time, when Switzerland was going through all these troubles, he managed to immigrate went to USA. And then he became one of the interns. It, he was uh, doing internship under world famous architect Frank Lloyd Wright. He was one of the very well known names in those times. And he had celebrated 80th birthday and universities from all over the world, they were bestowing honorary degrees and everything, all that. He was very famous. The famous man you get. So Anandamayaji had just read Autobiography Yogi. So he knew a little bit about this purpose of life and how we can be really happy, etc. So he thought, here is the man who is well known throughout the world. He has got everything the world is looking for, name, fame and everything. So let me study him carefully. So he watched him like a hawk. <laughs> he watched him very carefully. He said, really happy. <laughs> when <laughs> no one else was watching, he was watching him closely. And he found that one, one day he got he was a very frustrated man. With all this name, fame, everything, and he was a frustrated man. Then he thought, oh, if I follow him, if I also become world famous architect, what then? <laughs> I will also be like that. So he joined Paramahansa Yogananji's path at that time. For him, you know, that was the turning point. But then why I am telling you this story is that we have to study others and see what we are looking for, those who have achieved, all have they, do they have real all-round success or not? Are they really happy? If you ask this question, then you find that it will make a lot of sense if you listen to great saints like Paramahansa Yogananda because they have done a lot of research and they themselves have undergone all these experiences and from their experience they are sharing. It is not only academic, it's a practical thing and they are sharing. So if you listen to them and we also, you know, apply our minds, they are not asking us to blind Blind, blindly believe. They don't want us to be superstitious. Paramahansa Yogananji says you should be spiritual scientist or spiritual explorer. That means you try and find out whether it is true or not by applying these principles. Then if it is true, you accept. You know, this is very fair, isn't it? It is not that we are asked to just believe. It is not like that. But any hypothesis, suppose you want to test, first you should have the belief that it is maybe it is true. It may be true, may not be true, but at least we, that much belief should be there to experiment. <laughs> Even if it is not that we are so, so skeptical, right in the beginning we say, no, all these things are just humbug, it's all imagination, it's not really true, <laughs> then you can't be really exploring, isn't it? So if you are a real explorer, you should have that much of you know confidence or belief to start with. But then you experiment and see whether it really works or not, then you can accept after that. So, so now you see what Paramahansa Yogananji says, you see so wonderful correlation, isn't it, between what the management experts had found and what Paramahansa Yogananda says. Real success means living in alignment with the cosmic principles and be always peaceful and happy inside. You are not going against your conscience. 
you know that is the real happiness and then further he elaborates to have good health nothing wrong in having in fact it is an essential to have good health the body is not fit we can neither achieve spiritual success nor we can achieve outer success <laughs> you know it's not possible because when you just want to do something your body sets down <laughs> it doesn't cooperate then you can't do anything so we have to keep the body in our command it has like when i joined here those days the friendly ragging used to be there <laughs> i don't recommend ragging but then you see those days my seniors who ragged me they told me don't become a mug pot <laughs> because there'll be so many exams and uh, so many things will be there you know that you will be very much naturally inclined to go on reading all the time don't do that that better to have a balanced life spend time in sports and uh, cultural activities and things like that i'm very grateful to them for that because after that i started discovering i was sharing with my young friends before i came here how i used to do those days early morning i used to get up from my hostel i was in godavari hostel for 4 years and from there i used to run to the gate and then come back you know i first i started running up to gajendra circle and then go back prepared myself little bit for some days after that i started running then i used to go to the grounds and they used to do 400 meters 12 and of times 5 5 kilometers like that so this campus helped me to become aware of this need for exercise that's very important because when you are young that is the time to start correctly so at this time if you neglect the exercises then the future is very difficult after when you become 40 years old 50 years old and you regret oh i am not yet you know very regular in my exercise then doctor says you have to exercise otherwise your heart will be in a very you know it will give you a lot of trouble or sugar problem and this that all sorts of things will come but when you are very pakka in your exercise you are very regular in your exercise you will see lot of diseases can be avoided if you do that this is what devi shetty the famous you know heart surgeon he advises whenever he goes anywhere he says don't come to us with a heart problem you avoid that <laughs> take preventive measures by doing exercise vigorous exercise aerobic exercise regular exercise this what params yogananda ji recommends every day we should do such exercise so that you sweat vigorous exercise okay so keeping the body fit to have the good physical health is very important exercise is only one of them diet is another one <laughs> which is a difficult subject during the student days <laughs> but then <laughs> still you need to exercise control i mean try to take foods which are nutritious which are tasty and which are helpful for you rather than something which is very only taste for only for taste or it stimulates your senses or it dulls your conscience consciousness don't do that try to experiment and see which food is suitable for you each one will be different so you choose for yourself which diet you choose a simple diet which is helpful for your constitution which helps you to maintain your good health so diet exercise and good sleep <laughs> enough sleep you know this is very important nowadays so much research is going on on sleep disorder they find out people who consistently miss sleep they are in trouble they get all sorts of diseases root cause they are not having enough sleep you know simple thing so you are going to get a good job after this and nowadays so much competition and you know that uh, so much stress will be there right from the beginning you have a good balanced life so that you don't get into that you know the working 18 hours a day or 16 hours a day and all the time you know that doing work 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 and you get stressed out and no time for exercise no not eating proper food eating junk food all the time so this type of thing you are in, you will be in trouble so don't allow that you find you know you have your own free space don't let others dictate your life you have to choose your own life what you want to do that if the company says okay you can have an talk with them i will work only so many hours that much only i can do doing the work i will give maximum attention and work but otherwise you can't make me work all the time you know just to go go home and there also go on working and all the time just become workaholics you know that will not do so you have to be firm and you have to you know that uh, uh, find your own free space okay so all that it's a big subject second one to have prosperity nothing wrong 
in having wealth. Don't think that yoga means, meditation means you have to renounce all wealth and nothing. You have to be a pauper. <laughs> that is not true. Because yoga, yoga means all round success. That's to be successful means whatever you need, you should be able to get. You should have the ability. You have to earn what is needed for you. If you don't have, you are not a successful person. So if you are a successful person, any job which is suitable to you, you do that and maintain yourself, maintain your dependence, all of that, this all, pros how prosperity is good. But catch, there is a catch. If you are thinking only about your own self, selfishly, you are not bothered about others, then you are going against cosmic laws. Because cosmic law wants, you become prosperous, you help others also to become prosperous. So that is what Paramahansa Yogananda is saying. To have prosperity, include others in as you are interested in your well-being and help others also in their to become you know prosperous and to have harmonious human relationships because you may have all sorts of success but if you all the time keep fighting with people and you have quarrels and you don't get along with people so then it is not real success you may be a brilliant person but if you don't get along you know interesting i will give you an incident daniel goldman's book you may have read emotional intelligence in that he gives a very small story. A graduate from MIT or Harvard, you know, like our ITM, similar to that, very highly reputed institute. From that, a engineer, I mean a student who had passed out, many big companies, they were buying for getting the person recruited in their company. And finally one company managed to get that. And he was a brilliant person, genius. But then they hired him, after three months they fired him. You know why? <laughs> because he was so much headstrong, so he put down and he was looking down upon everybody else. There was no teamwork and just with single person, just doing single person excellence is not enough for a company to succeed. So the company decided to just send him out afterwards. So this is a dramatic example that tells us that getting along with others is very important. You know, once I was traveling from Bangkok, uh, Tokyo to Bangkok. In the flight, a Japanese gentleman sat next to me, young man. He introduced himself. I told him he was IT engineer and he was going for interview, job interview to Bangkok. Then I asked him, nowadays, what sort of questions do they ask? What do they concentrate on? Do they check only your skills or what? He said, no. Less than 50%, they check your technical knowledge and skills. Other 50% is soft skills. How you get along with others, how you, how, how, I mean, how much value you give for teamwork, these type of things. So, you know, it validates. That means these are very important to learn also, learning soft skills. And the last portion, last one, which is what most people neglect. <laughs> to have a well-defined purpose in life. If you have no purpose in life, <laughs> then a businessman, he was in a hurry. He wanted to attend a business meeting in Mumbai, he, he went by flight, he got down, then hired a cab, then he said, drive fast, that I have, I, am, I have to go for my meeting. So then he asked, where do you want me to go? Don't ask questions, just drive. <laughs> so he kept on driving, he went somewhere, he asked, where did you come? So he didn't tell me where to go, I am even driving only all the time. <laughs> Looks very funny, isn't it? But this is what most of us do in life. We have no clear-cut purpose in life, what we want to achieve, what we want to become. We just simply imitate other people or do whatever we feel like. And finally, we discover that, oh, I, I, I don't know why, or what was the purpose of my life. So why waste life like that? Right in the beginning, we ask questions. In fact, IIT Madras, I'm very grateful because we had a beautiful library here. Those days, I used to attend the library, I used to go library. And our student friend was telling me, sharing with me also, many students do that. They go later on to the library and study. I'm very happy to hear. So I used to go to the library and that frequent so many departments, metaphysics, philosophy, and so many of them. I read a lot of books. In fact, semester holidays, I used to take some books home and used to read also. <laughs> and the more I was reading, but I was getting more and more confused. <laughs> I was not getting clarity. So this went on for years. Finally, in the final year, a friend of mine, another student, 
he was a drug addict unfortunately he had just got into drugs and his life was getting wasted suddenly he changed he became normal he has started ta- talking coherently previously he would not even talk coherently he was so bad but then he started talking coherently he was you know nice so then i asked him what happened to you he said he read autobiography of yogi he got so much inspiration then he started taking lessons from ranchi started practicing the meditation techniques and then in a few months he got so much of inner you know that uh, self control so much of uh, strength from inside he kicked the habit so i was very inspired to hear that i took the book from him in fact <laughs> the first i read the autobiography taking the copy from him only <laughs> so i am sharing this very happy to share that in the same institute from where i passed i am sharing this experience to you with you to show this book can transform your life for that purpose i am not saying that everybody should read this book like that that's up to you i am just telling you how it transformed my life then it's up to you to see to experiment and check whether for you also it's inspiring or not because each one of us we have our own vibratory rate we have our own vibration so when we meet another person of similar vibration then we also like similarly the path especially spiritual path so if that vibration matches with our vibration then it will be very suitable for us how do you find out one by logical thinking by think whether this you are able to agree everything makes sense or not second from the heart you check your feeling how you feel because when you meet somebody you feel immediately very comfortable you open your heart you talk with that person with some others you feel little bit reluctant you are very careful you don't want to talk you know like that because there is something some vibration is disturbing you we all know that because we can't put it in words but these are all magnetic things that's why we can't put it in words uh, magnetically we feel magnetism every person emanates magnetism so my magnetism and other person's magnetism if it matches then we are comfortable <laughs> like this so path also we have to do similar thing you know i am from tamil nadu i had read in tamil uh, uh, till uh, school i had done in tamil medium so one great saint thiruvalluvar he said one line i will just quote that eppurul ethanmai thayinum appurul meipurul kanbadarivu whatever any any thing you have to deeply think about it study and really what it is you have to know not just superficially what you think is you know what it is you have to really go deep and really understand that uh, that is what the real knowledge is that's what he says so this is what we need to do spiritual scientist means we really think for ourselves check for ourselves experiment ourselves and see and then we accept okay so now you see the bal- balance that means the body health is to be kept prosperity that means whatever we need in life we have the ability to achieve that third harmonious human relationships we have good emotional control that means we should know what is happening inside when you are fearful when you are afraid when you are depressed when you are angry we should recognize that and then change the pervasive emotions into positive emotions transmutation so this we have to give training for that then only these things will happen so once we have control over ourselves then we can get along with others stephen covey seven habits you see first four habits they deal first three habits they deal with private victories that is you achieve it within yourself then the next three with others win win relationship and all that whatever and the seventh one is sharpening the saw that means regularly we have to improve your fa- all your faculties you have to keep them all in tip top good condition body mind everything all the faculties you have to keep in good condition so you see now Paramahamsa Shivananda's formula for all round success it makes lot of sense isn't it that mean you have to keep your body fit and in a healthy condition and you have to become be prosperous and successful outwardly and also you have to have good harmonious relationships understand people have empathy and understand everyone no matter how the where the person is whatever the status social status deal with everybody you know with love and with a serviceful attitude and then to have well defined purpose in life to have a clear cut purpose in life now coming back to the story 
so after i read autobiography of yogi though i read so many books you know so in so many years as i said i was getting more and more confused then when i read the autobiography of yogi things all fell into their place i could understand clearly what is the purpose of life what i have understood i will share with you which paramesh yogananda says in the last chapter 49 chapter you yourself can see as brahmachari narayanan ji said later on we will make one announcement which all of you like very much we are going to give you free ebook autobiography to each one of you <laughs> so you all can anyone every any one of you who is interested in reading so you can all read that ebook okay so the last chapter of autobiography 49th chapter where param shivananda ji tells us one thing very beautifully our rishis and munis in vedic and uh, vedic rishis and munis have told us one thing that is god has created each one of us with some uniqueness or speciality special ability each one of us we are special before god since we have been specially created god loves each one of us equally this is something fantastic isn't it we may think that god may love great saints great achievers we have been love me also <laughs> you know we may think like that but then this is what the great saint says god loves you know each one because he created each one of us with uniqueness then what is the purpose of life to understand that uniqueness and bring out that uniqueness against all challenges because challenges will be there it is not easy to bring out the uniqueness because it is in potential form the potential form has to become kinetic it has to be activated it has to be manifested it has to be externalized so that is lot of difficulties and obstacles will come in that that's why we all go through all problems but then you know when i attend the job interview on a campus interview here probably lnt or somewhere people had come i don't remember that they asked me the question what what job do you like i said i want a challenging job <laughs> you know many of us feel that isn't it we don't want a simple job every day doing the same thing it will be boring you know just nothing interesting in that when you have a challenging job and there are challenges we fight against the challenges and win then we are really victorious that's what life is throwing all sorts of challenges to us so we have to develop the essential life skill what is the essential life skill it is our determination to face any challenge which comes and overcome and understand and win be victorious in life so if we all take that attitude that no challenges i will not allow any problems to floor me one no whatever comes i will face manfully i will face the problem whichever comes to me i will not lose courage so this type of attitude we will have to take and fight you know that win because god has created the uniqueness spark is already there that spark is to be developed that uniqueness is to be brought out that the potentially what is there in seed form that is to be grown that is to be manifested that is what the purpose of life is so simple isn't it that means we understand in this way each one of us we are very special we are all equally loved by god and he has given us a gift of that speciality all we need to do is to bring out that speciality since it's so tough to bring it out so many challenges are there we need help that's why we do meditation <laughs> now you see why do we do meditation when we meditate what do we do we detach from our little self because we are now so much focused on the little self and then we think about only this now we detach from that connect with the infinite source then our capacity increases many fold it is not limited to what we have developed so far individually it is we are connecting with the universal force so then there is a tremendous capacity comes to us there is a great power is behind our little will power and there is a great love which is behind our little human emotion and there is a great joy which is behind our little happiness so all this you know there all these are possible through meditation infinite possibilities are there that's why today we will have a brief period of conducted meditation so that it is not just talk all of us let us also experience little bit because in yogada satsanga teachings the emphasis is on experience 
it is not on philosophy it is on just only understanding the theory theory we have to understand to some extent but then the real thing is to practice and experience that is the real thing that means peace is to be experienced joy it is to be experienced it is not to be just talked about and the love for everybody it is to be experienced it should come it is a verb it is not just a feeling it is actually we want to really love everybody no hate for anyone like that so this type of things are possible by every day spending some time in meditation where we become very quiet what is meditation very simple way meditation means detaching from the outside world relaxing completely keep the body relaxed and keep the mind very calm without movement just calm and then when we go inside we discover oh i have come from the infinite source that infinite source has become individualized and has become this little being human being so when we play our part in this life then we are this little human beings but we don't have to go on playing all the time this is may seem strange but then it is happening naturally how when we sleep in the night what do we do we detach from the body we energy goes inside we actually unconsciously connect with god so you know this is what <laughs> so we get charged again when we do like that so consciously can we not do that why unconsciously in sleep only we get a little bit of you know that rejuvenation this is what meditation is meditation is inner energy control which means the life energy which is controlling all our activities by using life energy we are functioning you know yogis have told us very clearly paramsh yogana ji explains in a very simple way we have our medulla oblongata which is the entry point for the energy into the body which we cannot see instruments cannot pick up that because this is astral level different dimension so the energy comes in and it is stored in what is called sahasrara thousand petal lotus where that is the storehouse of energy prana then there are various sub centers in the spine different centers cervical center dorsal center lumbar center etc and through those centers the energy is goes everywhere it gives powers the nerves muscles and everything they are all powered by this energy okay and when this energy withdraws death happens that's that the time we leave this body when the energy withdraws and goes in a different dimension so when we die it doesn't mean that we are annihilated just one dimension we we are not functioning in the physical dimension we still continue to function in the astral and causal dimension okay that's a different subject so then what do we in sleep we are withdrawing from the physical dimension and we are in the astral level we are connecting with the infinite source that's how we are getting very recharged and replenished our energy is replenished because throughout the day we are using the energy and we it's depleted then we become tired but after sleep we are getting again we become fresh have you thought about it how why do we get fresh when we sleep that's because after sleep in sleep unconsciously we are connecting ourselves and charging like a mobile when it gets charged so we connect to the source and get again charged similarly god has given the provision unconsciously every day we have to otherwise we can't function sleep is so important because in sleep we get that charging so now by meditation consciously whenever we want we can charge it's so wonderful isn't it so if you think of you know when you simple way when you understand meditation we all would like to meditate once we understand how meditation is so important next how to meditate if we don't know we can't meditate it's not just simply closing your eyes not doing anything that's not meditation then you will just go to passive state and go to sleep and you will lose all interest it will be boring real meditation means we are focused it's called focused stillness we get stillness but it is focused that means we experience the deep peace we experience the deep joy we experience lot of love for god love for everybody so these feelings vibrations spiritual vibrations we experience inside that is what the real meditation okay let us have a small meditative meditation break now <laughs> before i continue the talk little bit more i have only a few more points because as i said today is only appetizer course 
it is not the real dinner we are not serving we are not serving dinner now it's only appetizer so appetizer should not become dinner <laughs> so i should not go on talking so let us have a small little experience then i will wrap it up after that with a few summary points okay so let us all just close our eyes and then three things we need to do in meditation in order to have a good meditation one spine should be straight first second body should be relaxed no tension anywhere body is completely relaxed third this is the most important thing the two eyes they are focused up you look up and then you can straight look up at the point between the eyebrows and close your eyes if it is difficult you look up at a, some angle at a, you know you look at the ceiling at some angle and then close your eyes there whatever it is above the horizontal level eyes have to be up that is the most important thing because when the eyes go down then you go to subconscious state you go to sleep when eyes are looking level then you are in the normal waking state five senses are working we want to withdraw from the five senses we want to reach the deep calm state of calmness so we just focus our eyes at the point between the eyebrows so let us remember these three points now and then you have a checklist just check whether your eyes are still here or they have come down because we are not trained the eyes yet eyes are not trained yet so those who are doing first time it may be difficult but don't strain without strain very quietly calmly just uplift your eyes whatever is possible for you whatever angle you can if you are able to straight away focus here well and good very nice if not at some angle also is fine whatever way just uplift your eyes and keep there please maintain this state throughout this conducted meditation now we are starting the meditation so when we start the meditation param shyogananji has given a scientific method by which we can relax the body more completely how do we do that first through the mouth we do double breathing exhalation please try one shot one long through the mouth and relax completely now take one breath through the nose nostrils and tense the whole body from feet to head by making fists so whole body is tensed hold the tension for 6 seconds 6 counts 2 seconds per count then double breathing exhalation throw the breath out and relax okay let us do again inhale and tense the whole body double breathing exhalation and relax let us do again inhale exhale and relax and you will see that if you do that immediately you will find body is much more relaxed that's why it's a very scientific method first you tense more and then you let go you are able to relax much better scientific studies are proving that best way to relax is tense more and then relax okay we have done this preliminary now we are ready for the meditation we do one more preliminary exercise what do we do we take the breath through the nostrils slowly to a count of i will give count of 8 then hold to a count of 8 and exhale expel the breath through the mouth slowly to the count of 8 inhale through the nostrils hold expel through the nostrils uh, through the mouth so let us do that three times so first round i will give the count start inhaling 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 hold 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 expel through the mouth slowly 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 inhale again 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 8 hold 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 8 expel through the mouth 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 8 8 do it once more at your own speed
okay now take one breath through the nostrils deep breath then expel through the mouth quickly <sighs> now the silent pranayama starts what do we do we simply observe the breath as it comes and goes without controlling natural breath let as the breath comes we are just aware breath is coming we are aware breath is flowing out don't control don't shorten don't lengthen and don't hold simply let it come and go as if you are watching somebody else's breath just watch your own breath let us watch just for 1 minute just watch the breath coming and going breath is just coming and breath is just going at its own pace if inhalation is long expulsion is short don't worry about anything just simply watch be aware but don't let the mind go anywhere else just tie it to the breath just keep watching the breath only another 30 seconds let us continue to watch the mind is going anywhere else bring it back just focus on the breath only be aware of the breath coming be aware of the breath going out if you do for a longer period like 5 10 minutes you will find slowly the mind become very calm your power of concentration increases your power of memory retention increases you are able to understand things much faster mind becomes crystal clear and calm but now we are practicing just little bit 2 minutes another 30 seconds let us practice now take one breath through with a double breathing throw the breath out now without taking another breath as long as you can comfortably hold the breathless state just enjoy that enjoy the breathless state how long whatever time you can comfortably remain so then take another breath again double breathing expel and remain in the state of without taking another breath as long as you can repeat it once more one more breath double breathing expulsion then remain in the state of breathlessness without taking another breath as long as you can comfortably do so now forget the breath remain at the point between the eyebrows where you uplifted your eyes don't bring them down don't open your eyes just remain there we will hold on to that meditative state for a little while more first just be aware of the peace which you are experiencing or comfortable feeling just remain there for 30 seconds without any other thought just enjoy the stillness
Now we'll do one visualization method. Visualization means imagination, imaging technique by which we will be able to recall, remember the real thing. Imagination leads to finally realization. In the beginning it's only imagination but still it's very helpful. Let us all practice that. Remain in that same meditative state. Don't open your eyes. Now imagine a point of light between the, at the point between the eyebrows. Between your two eyebrows in the center point, imagine a point of light and which is full of joy. Just imagine that. And from your forehead, from your that point between the eyebrows that is expanding and it is filling whole your forehead. Whole your forehead is full of light and it is very joyous. In this way, we will go on expanding now. From your forehead, think that whole face is now covered with the light. And it is very enjoyable, joyous. And the whole from whole face, it is expanding. Whole body is now immersed in light. Expand further. The whole auditorium, all of us, we are all swimming in that light. Floating in that light. further expand, whole of IIT campus is now immersed in that light. Expand further, whole of Chennai city is immersed. Without break go on expanding. Further, whole of Tamil Nadu now expanding, further expanding, expanding. Whole of Bharat, India is now immersed in that light. Further expand, whole of Asia and the whole world, like a globe. Imagine a globe, world globe, that is all immersed in that light and it is full of joy. Expand further, not only our earth, all planets which are all revolving around the sun, the whole solar system, earth and planets, all of them, the whole solar system is immersed in divine light and full of joy. Expand further, our sun is only one of the stars in our galaxy. So in the Milky Way, our galaxy, there are so many other stars. So all those, the whole galaxy is now immersed in that light. And expand further, all stellar systems, intergalactic space, everything, expanding, expanding. To your left, you see infinite directions, the light is there. To the right, infinite directions, front, back, above, beneath, within, without. In all directions, the light is spread out and it is full of joy. Now, open your eyes, look at your body for a, just for a brief few seconds, close your eyes again. Now you think, oh, I am not this tiny body. This is just for the sake of playing my role. I have been given this individuality. I am actually part of the infinite source. I am infinite light. I am infinite joy. I am a little particle of joy. I am a little particle of light, little spark of light. I am one with the infinite. I am one with the infinite. I am one with the infinite. Think for a few times like that. Few, ti few times you repeat that statement. I am one with the infinite mentally. Okay, we will close Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Now you can open your eyes. So this is what yoga meditation is all about. By stilling the body and mind. That's what Patanjali, the one who wrote the Yoga Sutras, gives the definition of yoga. Yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha. That means all the oscillations of the mind, they are equilibrated, neutralized and we discover our own real self which is one with God. So yoga bestows freedom from all suffering and leads to all round success by living a balanced life. You see, that's a beautiful definition of yoga. 
This is what very simple way Bhagavan Krishna tells us in the Bhagavad Gita. That is, Yukta Hara Viharasya, Yukta Cheshtasya Karmasu, Yukta Sopanava Bodhasya, Yogo Bhavati Dukkaha. One who eats with proper regularity, neither eating too much nor fasting too much. One who relax, neither relaxes too much nor he works too much. Neither he sleeps too much nor, nor he remains awake too much. With this type of balanced life, yoga becomes the means to destroy all suffering. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? Yogo bhavati dukkaha. That means all suffering gone. Surely all of us want that. <laughs> so, yoga by leading a balanced life, we will be able to achieve that. This is the assurance given by Bhagavan Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Now, I will just briefly touch on the curriculum for all-round development, life skill. The real life skill is how to live training given by Paramahansa Yogananda. There are just four points, very easy to remember. One, science of body care for practical efficiency. That means body has to give us the service whenever we want. It should be very efficient. So science of body care for practical efficiency. Second, mental engineering, which all of us can appreciate. Being, you know, that uh, in this uh, engineering institute, technological institute. Why engineering? Thought is very intangible, academic it looks like. But thought is to be put to practical use. Like from failure to go to success, using thought, developing our willpower, what we are not able to do right now, we are able to achieve it. So these type of things, that's all mental engineering. It's a big subject. I'm just giving you just a summary. Third, social arts. Social arts is from the heart. So we have the left brain, right brain, both need to be developed in a uniform way. So with one brain, we use logical thinking and then we just analyze with our intellect. With the other brain, we sense, we feel, we develop our emotions and we understand our emotions, understand others' emotions. All of that is a big subject. Again, social arts, that is the third one, emotional dimension. And the fourth one, applied spiritual science. What we all just now experience a little bit, just a tiny bit. We all felt so happy, isn't it? Very calm, very peaceful. Just give a little hint. So if you practice this every day, morning and evening, surely you will find you are a different person. You are able to handle stress much better. You are able to face challenges much better because you got something much higher. This is what Einstein said. If there is a problem at one level, what do we do? You operate from a higher level. Then this level problem becomes trivial. It becomes very easy to solve. Child's play. <laughs> because you are operating from a higher level, isn't it? Very simple. Same way, if our consciousness is always tied to the external world, because of that, it's always up and down, subject to moves and swings and all that. Now, you go to a higher level. You remain calm. You are in possession of your own mind. You are able to control your mind. You are able to control your body. You are functioning from a higher level. Then, whatever challenges come, problems come, you find a solution. You know how to, you know, you find your own solution, which comes from connection with the infinite source. When we connect with the infinite source, you can ask the question, okay, you created me, you love me, fine, but will you not guide me now? What shall I do? Which job should I take? What course should I do? Which, what, what is the next step I should take? Can we not ask? So this is a personal relationship with the infinite we need to form. It's very important. If we form the personal relationship, it's not out of fear. It is out of love. Because God is love. This is 4th 49th chapter. Param Sivaganandji tells us very clearly, God is love. And his plan for creation can only be rooted in love. Nothing else. You know, that gives so much of solace to the human heart. More than any type of reasoning. From the heart, we feel so comfortable hearing that. That is what the truth is. God is love. So, but then, we need to form the relationship. God will not compel us. He has given independence. So, we can choose to ignore God. And we can choose to lead the life the way we want. Whatever we want to do. We have independence. But when we are wise, what do we do? We try to understand the cosmic principles by which the life is governed. We connect with the, uh, align with the cosmic principles, conduct our life accordingly. Then we find, day by day, 
we are becoming more and more peaceful and we are finding more and more positive and we are more and more joyous surely all of us want that <laughs> so i am i i pray that all of you open mindedly examine whatever we have you have heard today think for yourself and see and then take the step of every day spending some time in meditation if you can do that 5 minutes morning 5 minutes in the evening or night then gradually increase the time more because automatically you will do more time because from meditation you get so much of strength you get so much of that uh, you know uh, intuitive insight about life because intuitive insight is very important just with logical thinking you can't get that insight insight comes only through intuition intuition is the higher knowledge so let us try to do that and try to develop i had prepared a few slides but i don't have to go through all of that because the summary is already here just remember you have to develop the body understand the body develop it properly so that good health is there and efficiently the body gives you service then mental engineering use your thoughts to just control your life whatever you want and then understand the emotions which are inside understand others emotions learn to get along with everyone and fourth one form a close personal relationship with the infinite whatever aspect you want whatever way you like it doesn't matter so you can think of god as allah you can think of god as a god you can say or you can say bhagwan whatever way you call it makes no difference it is a one infinite intelligence there is only one you know divine principle whatever way you want you connect because god only created all the variety so you can connect with him the way you want whatever you like there is no uh, particular formula for that so you form your own personal relationship very close intimate personal relationship and ask for guidance every day that's why you do meditation you connect and ask for guidance what how shall i proceed so we need inner life outer life both we need to balance through inner life we connect with the source and ask the guidance outer life we leave that whatever we have got we have to manifest that in our behavior we have to show that like suppose we feel great love for everybody in our behavior it has to come out if it is only academic we are only thinking inside but outside we are you know like we have the popular saying what is that street angel house devil <laughs> outside world the person is very nice and uh, everybody you know everybody thinks he is a very good person but when he comes home he lets loose <laughs> he just fights with people and just does all that so that is no good we have to be good all the time not just only outside to show people <laughs> but you have to be in the, uh, everywhere you have to be like that so if you try to do all this i am sure that our life will be transformed okay sir thank you okay thank you all it is great pleasure to meet you all in this evening thank you actually we had a wonderful hospitality in uh, iit chennai our professor and dean has arranged everything very well and many of your students also